You've always been told that the Earth revolves around a given axis, in addition to the fact that it travels around the Sun. But when you step outside and view it for yourself, it certainly appears that the Earth is stationary, and it is in fact the stars that revolve around you. In the Ptolemaic universe, the Earth is immobily set at the center of the universe, with the Sun, planets, and all the stars being carried round by the motion of a much larger celestial sphere. This daily motion from east to west, which is shared by all the heavenly bodies, is the first of two prime movements in the heavens. The celestial axis, defined by the daily revolution of the celestial sphere, serves as the primary reference for several great circles within the celestial sphere. The first is the greatest of the parallel circles traced by the daily motion of the stars around the celestial axis. It passes through the center of the celestial sphere, resulting in it being always cut equally by any other plane through the center of the celestial sphere, and the day and night, consequently, always observed to be sensibly equal. Hence, it is called the celestial equator. Perpendicular to this circle, and passing through the celestial axis, is the great circle which defines the right sphere, establishing a reference for the equinoctial points of every other horizon. The second prime movement of the heavens is that by which the sun and planets make local motions in the opposite direction of the celestial sphere, namely from west to east. While there is some variation in the planes of their circles of motion, they can all be approximated by the readily observable oblique path of the sun. This great circle is referred to as the ecliptic, the reason being that when the moon coincides exactly with the path of the sun, an eclipse occurs. The sun's complete circuit around the ecliptic is that by which man has always measured a full year, and it is inclined from the celestial equator by approximately 23 degrees. The motion of the celestial sphere, combined with the contrary motion of the sun along the ecliptic, results in the sun tracing out a spiral path, which has been named Helix as a consequence, derived from the name of the Greek god of the sun, Helios. The great circle conceived through both the celestial axis and the axis of the ecliptic is carried with the motion of the celestial sphere, thereby ensuring the ecliptic remains fixed with respect to the celestial equator. The points where this circle intersects the ecliptic are the points of the sun's greatest northern advance, or summer tropic, and its greatest southern advance, or winter tropic. The great circles that define the right sphere and that of the ecliptic intersect at the same points on the celestial equator, thereby defining the equinoctial points along the ecliptic. At every other point along the ecliptic, only the equator continually has equinoctial days and nights. But when the sun reaches autumn equinox as it passes from summer to winter, and the spring equinox as it passes from winter to summer, every region of the Earth has an equinox for that day, since the daily motion of the sun then corresponds with the equator, which, as was seen before, is cut equally by any viewer's horizon. And it is only the beginning of the Almagest.